Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on Storm Talk. This is Way 3 News Meteorologist Brian Good. Going to cover uh, the storm threat here and the heavy rain threat the next few days and then get into the weekend as well. So uh, it's been fairly quiet, really, uh, the past several days, but it's about to get pretty busy for us. So let's break it down. First off, uh, for the outlook for today in severe weather, we're only in the uh, thunderstorm zone. We're not really expecting much in the way of severe weather. A strong storm or two cannot be rolled out. Uh, not a big ordeal. Tomorrow. Notice the core of the severe threats is going to be located across the Ozarks, mainly of Missouri and Arkansas. Still general thunderstorms for us. And then notice that the marginal dives more southeast than due east. I'll explain what that is here in just a second. First off, the radar at the moment. Uh, quiet. I will say by looking at the visible satellite, though, there is enough heating going on. We've had some cirrus clouds and some haze for a while, but it looks like right in this zone, we're going to see thunderstorms uh, pop very soon. In fact, maybe even two zones that we'll see thunderstorms uh, develop here. One to our south and the one northwest to southeast will begin to pop here along this boundary uh, for this afternoon. Let me show you what it looks like in a wider view. And as I do so, I'll put this into uh, animation. Kind of see the story that we are talking about as we head through the next, I would say, uh, 24 to 36 hours. There's a front that is stretched out across... Illinois, Indiana, into Kentucky, and we've had some showers that try to work their way into here. Still got some dry air play, uh, and not enough support really, more than the dry air, to really limit how much coverage these thunderstorms can have so far. But the heating of the day is going to balance that out. So that's why I think most of the activity is going to be just south of the front for this afternoon. But even here in Louisville, we're now out of the woods for thunderstorms uh, to roll into the area. But I want to bring your attention to what's happening out here. This is an area of low pressure, more like a bowling ball effect, if you will, that is just waiting for us. And it's heading in our direction. It's going to ride right along the front as this front drops to the south tonight and into uh, Kentucky. We'll start to see thunderstorms increase. So in the short term, any thunderstorm action this afternoon and evening is going to slowly work its way a little more and a little more into southern Kentucky and Tennessee. All right, that'll happen over the next eight hours. It'll then stop. At that point, when the bowling ball comes out, it'll ride the front. And in the front, again, the front should be mainly across southern Kentucky. But this is going to be a fairly large wave that's going to ride the front. So the rain shield is going to be pretty expansive as it moves to the east. So really, there's no escaping it. It's going to come through here. There will be more of a concentration of thunderstorms on the warmer part of the low-pressure track, and that's going to be on the southern side, closer to the front boundary, is where your heaviest of thunderstorms, unlikely the strongest of thunderstorms, will take place. Therefore, your higher rain totals will likely happen as well. But still, lots of clouds and thunderstorms for a lot of us as this wave passes through. I need to stress, though, this area of low pressure, this bowling ball, is a slow mover. It's going to eventually get kicked out of here, but it's going to take about a good 48 hours to get out of our area. Not a bad thing, though, because if we can avoid thunderstorms and get some general rain to move through, that's really what we need. And especially the farmers right now, it'd be welcomed. So... Um, it's hard to say that having so much rain in July, but yeah, this time of year, it's about, you know, not so much how you have all at once. You've got to have frequent periods of rain to keep things going pretty good, and I think we're going to see that with this system moving through. So, let's start off with the model trends for this afternoon tonight. Again, you see the couple of boundaries. What it looks like this model is trying to do is it's trying to develop that one I showed you to the south, and it would produce some outflow boundaries that would then push into our area in Louisville and uh, Southern Indiana and develop thunderstorms and those will fade out. So that's what it looks like to me. So, and that looks logical. So we may very well see storms initiate here. They will produce outflows that go north, kind of an odd direction there to go north and that'll generate new thunderstorms right along uh, Northern Kentucky and right along the Ohio River for the late evening time frame. We'll see if that plays out, but this is the uh, RPM model and I like the look of that because uh, meteorologically speaking, that does seem to make much more sense of how the setup is for this afternoon. We'll get a break later tonight, but it's a brief one because then here we go with the bowling ball. And it's got lawn arms with it here, feeder bands, if you will. We'll see one of those bands work its way in from the south and southwest during the day on Wednesday. Some spotty drizzle and showers possible through midday. If we get enough sunshine, we'll easily heat up to like our friends here to the east are, upper 80s. Uh, but the quicker we cloud up, we're going to be like everybody else, lower 80s at best. I'm going to go about 86 for right now. We'll make a final call coming up on the uh, on the newscast coming up tonight at 5. Either way, that band will work its way to the north. Periods of showers, maybe some rumbles of thunder again. Some of you to the north may completely escape it altogether uh, for this around. But then we get ready for the core. And there it comes rolling along. And again, the track of this is important. If the core of the spin is more toward the Wabash area, then we're going to get in on some of the heavier rain and stronger thunderstorm potential. 
if it is more focused to the south, like it's showing here in the model, more over southern Kentucky, then the core of the heaviest rain and thunderstorm action is going to be found here over Kentucky and lesser amounts over Indiana. But notice what happens either way is that it's going to be a cloudy day and temperatures will likely struggle in through the 70s most of the day today. I got a high of 80 right now on Thursday, but if we don't get any sun at all and we get sucked in some rain showers, we may have a complete day in the 70s, but it's a rain induced complete day in the 70s. Not perfect. Looking at the wind fields, um, this is the NAM model again with the core moving through. The stronger wind fields are on the, on the southeast side, but the strongest actually over Tennessee, and this is also where the strongest heating will be as well. So that's why I think the severe threat is going to be much more to the south. Couldn't rule out a few isolated strong storms in southern Kentucky and, and uh, on the southeast side of that low. If it does happen to take part in some any breaks in the cloud cover, I'm not expecting a lot of breaks, but a few breaks of uh, cloud cover and some sunshine can easily add to instability and it easily add to rotating storms at that. It's a low pressure, so yes, you can have rotating storms. Does it mean a tornado outbreak? No. I'm just saying that you could have some brief rotating storms, more so able to produce some gusty winds and maybe some hailstones as they pass through the area. But uh, again, not a big ordeal in severe weather the way it looks right now based on timing and the track of the low. GFS is even less impressed with this low. In fact, it's nearly an open wave as it passes through. Still got a pocket of good wind over Tennessee, but same scenario. I mean, mainly south. And I'm glad to see the GFS finally trend this way because it's been uh, really all over the place on how to handle Thursday and Friday. And now it looks like it's agreeing with the rest of the models. And that's the way we've been trending our forecast. And so far, so good. Uh, Got to watch this. P watts. This is the uh, precipital water. They're over two inches. So, yeah, there could be some pockets of some heavy rain. And if we get repeated rounds of rain here starting Wednesday afternoon through Thursday, Thursday night, if you're one of those counties that gets hit several times or, or, or hit by every one of those, you could be talking about some uh, decent rain totals moving through. In fact, here's the rainfall forecast for that general idea uh, that some areas could pick up two to three inches of rain, uh, not only because of thunderstorms, but also because of the uh, better moisture fields to the south here being on the southern side of that low, while the northern side, much lesser amounts. But again, I hate to repeat myself, uh, if the track is more north, then you got to move these totals more to the north. But uh, I think where the place right now looks... Uh, Looks to be in pretty good shape there. All right, so here's the humidity forecast, best moisture fields. This kind of gives you a good idea of how this is playing out because by Friday, we'll get a chance. Here's the, the low, finally offshore here, and it'll allow some dry air behind it. So it should allow for a nice looking Friday and uh, Saturday as well. Uh, looks fairly dry. Notice the moisture though, kind of surrounding us to the west. I think by the time we end to Sunday, Monday, our luck will begin to run out and we'll get another wave of rainfall moving our way, especially Monday and Tuesday. But as long as the timing holds out with this bowling ball moving through, we'll get a chance to dry out Friday and Saturday and most of Sunday to allow for a nice looking weekend. Uh, highs because the sun and dry air combination, we still got a pretty high sun angle, even though it's August. So we could easily still get into the 80s. Uh, I was hoping for at least one day of sunshine in upper 70s. It's a possibility on Friday if we stay cloudy till like 11 or 12 and then we break out in sun that we may stay in the 70s with sunshine. That's probably the only way. Otherwise, the sun angle is high enough that I think we'll get into the 80s for the weekend. But that's not bad. It's not going to be humid. That's the important part. That's how it all stands today. Stay tuned. This is an ever-evolving situation here, uh, one step at a time. First off, we've got to take care of these thunderstorms this afternoon. They'll be popping on the radar and kind of get that timed out better. Because we have a lot going on, a lot of events and everything else. And everybody wants to go outside this evening. And we've got to watch to see how these storms are south, develop, and push north later on. So uh, stay tuned, as they say.